The title of the presentation is Adaptation Works to Avoid the Flooding of Piazza San Marco in Venice, Physical Model Tests to Evaluate the Wetop in District. My co-workers are Chiara Favaretto, Matteo Volpato and Piero Ruol. My name is Luca Martinelli and I am Associate Professor at the University of Padova. You are certainly aware of the Moses system of gates in Venice placed at uh, uh, Bocca del Porto di Lido, Malamocco and Pioggia. Uh, which is designed in order to keep the water level in the lagoon below a certain level. This level is 110. Um, that was chosen you know, as a compromise to achieve safety within a limited number of closures per year, thus allowing for a sufficient water circulation in the lagoon. However, even the Mose uh, cannot avoid the flooding of uh, Piazza San Marco, uh, since uh, the floor of the piazza has a very low level and uh, additional works are necessary for uh, this case. The lowest parts of the piazza have an elevation of approximately 87 centimeters. And during high tide, for instance, consider that uh, last November tide uh, was uh, 187 centimeters, the piazza is obviously flooded. Flooding occurs uh, through the drainage system, as you can see from uh, the video. The water flows through the sewer drains or main holes. When the mosa will be operational, it will preserve a level of uh, uh, maximum 110 centimeters. It will then become possible to avoid the flooding thanks to other specific works uh, mitigating the return flow through the drainage system, filtration, uh, overflow through the boundaries and overtopping, which is a topic of uh, this uh, work, of this presentation. The expected overtopping discharge uh, was uh, uh, studied in a previous uh, paper and uh, it was found excessive for the uh, new envisaged uh, uh, pumping system. So this presentation focuses on the adaptation measures to the use of a topping for the piazza, uh, in particular a small temporary barrier, uh, uh, vertical and 40 centimeters in height, uh, placed uh, along the critical stretches uh, of the keys. This video shows the overtopping mechanism that uh, we are studying. Um, we see that uh, the water elevation due to tide is approximately at the same height of the key elevation, and therefore, um, just uh, small waves can produce uh, overtopping that uh, flood the, the uh, piazza. I will first present the investigated area, then the forcing conditions, the sea level and the waves that are expected when the mosaic will be operational, and uh, in these conditions, what is the expected overtopping, the absence of adaptation measures. This uh, is already published material, but in this presentation, we will focus on the suggested adaptation measures and on the expected overtopping with the uh, adaptation. And then the conclusions. The Venetian Lagoon is located uh, in Italy. This is Italy, this is the uh, Veneto region. Um, very close to uh, the Adriatic Sea, we have uh, uh, this lagoon uh, with the three mouths where the Mose uh, will be installed. And uh, um, this uh, is uh, the city of Venice. And this is the San Marco Island or San Marco Piazza with the square, which is so frequently flooded. This is a particular of Piazza San Marco, just where the key is present. And the key is divided in three sectors, <clears throat> A, B, and C. A and B are vertical walls. And uh, C, uh, in the part C part, there are descending uh, steps. The edge of the key here is approximately 100 uh, centimeters over the chart datum, meaning that it is even below the uh, maximum expected water level, uh, even when the Mose will be operational. But uh, as you can see here, um, there are uh, in color scale, there is the bathymetry, and uh, uh, in dotted lines, there is the highest part of this uh, uh, piazza, um, because the floor uh, uh, is a little sloping uh, downward in the inside and also sloping downward in the ups outside. Um, the red part here, uh, where, where this, in this area where the uh, black points are uh, um, uh, within the red uh, area, um, the level is approximately 117 centimeters. Uh, whereas in this part, uh, uh, well, the maximum height is approximately 110 centimeters. Uh, what does this mean? It means that uh, um, even if the level is sufficient to prevent in uh, the design condition uh, the overflow, of course uh, just a small uh, um, wave will uh, create uh, some overtopping. 
The cross-section of the keys is presented here. Um, this is uh, the cross-section of the keys in A and uh, B. Uh, you can see it is a vertical wall, basically, and then uh, there is this pavement uh, formed by uh, uh, Mazzegni uh, stones, and the difference between A and B is uh, um, basically uh, the slope of this uh, pavement, uh, whereas uh, this is uh, the key in, in the area C with these uh, descending steps. In order to study the overtopping, we need to know what uh, is uh, the uh, water level in front uh, of the keys and what uh, are the waves. So, for the water level, uh, we have to understand what are the closing scenarios for the Mose. They are based on predictions. If the water level, including the expected error, has the chance to achieve here, in front of uh, Venice, the level of 110, then the gates will close in advance. Therefore, it is expected that here the water level is lower or equal to 110 centimeters of the chart datum. Well, this is only the extreme case, and more frequently it will be between 90 and 100. For the wind waves, we have to look at the uh, wind, and in particular the wind um, blowing from direction 120 degree north. Um, this, uh, the possible wave, uh, have been studied in a companion paper that uh, is presented at uh, ISOPE in a few days. And, uh, um, well, uh, as an order of magnitude, if the blow, uh, wind blows with a speed larger than... These are two uh, cases of flooding of the piazza, one in 2013, one is two in 2012. Um, the uh, first panel here shows the significant wave height. The dotted line is the daily trend, so that you can see that mainly uh, the significant wave height is due to uh, passing uh, ships, but not always. The second panel uh, delays the um, water uh, level. These two are measured in front of Piazza San Marco, that is, that is here, they are measured in Punta della Salute. Um, and the third panel is the wind velocity, measured at the Lido Inlet. Uh, in this case, the wind velocity is approximately 15 meters per second, and um, the direction is uh, uh, approximately 120 degrees north, so that this wind actually uh, contributes to generate large waves, and you can see that uh, uh, waves up to 30 centimeters were observed. Um, in 2012, similar case, but uh, the wind was uh, up to 25 meters per second, and in that case, uh, the waves, the measured waves, are uh, of the order of 40 uh, centimeters. This program is based uh, on uh, this information, so that uh, five uh, wave attacks uh, were uh, considered, uh, with a wave height ranging from 20 to 75 centimeters, uh, two wave steepnesses, and three different uh, uh, water levels. 90 uh, centimeters, 1 meter, and 100, uh, uh, 1 meter, 110 centimeters. And uh, everything was scaled uh, in uh, uh, 1 to 5, and uh, the three crook section uh, were all uh, tested. This is a longitudinal uh, view of our wave flume with uh, all the structure on the right. Uh, this is all described uh, in uh, uh, the published uh, paper. Mm, this is how the vertical wall looks like and uh, during the building and uh, at the end and this is uh, section C with uh, the descending steps. The section A and B uh, are both uh, characterized by a vertical uh, uh, key uh, but uh, you can see that the sloping wall is different. In one case the top of the pavement is 110 because then the, uh, the pavement slopes down uh, whereas uh, uh, for section B, the pavement continues to raise up to uh, 117 centimeters, like uh, for section C, where uh, there are uh, uh, the descending steps. This is basically the investigated uh, phenomenon. In the lower panel, we have the flume, and uh, in the upper panel, uh, uh, we have this uh, case uh, with uh, uh, the tide basically, uh, the tide level basically at the height of the key. The results in terms of the expected overtopping along the way uh, have been uh, recently published uh, and um, the most critical section is section A, it is uh, vertical, 
uh, with the, the rest height of the pavement, uh, approximately um, 110 uh, centimeters. In this case, the overtopping is uh, really excessive and uh, um, some mitigation measure is necessary, otherwise too much water floods from uh, the lagoon. So let's give a look again at uh, section uh, A. Um, the key is a uh, water level 110, so, um, and there is a slightly sloping um, pavement up to 110 centimeters. Clearly, when uh, the um, water level is uh, 110 centimeters, just the smallest wave will uh, produce over. And the idea is to test the two possible configurations. Configuration A with this barrier placed just at the edge of the key. Uh, and uh, so, since uh, the top of the key is 110, then the, uh, the crest freeboard is uh, uh, at level 140. And in configuration A2, then this uh, bar, vertical barrier is placed inward of the edge, uh, just two and a half meter inward. But uh, of course, uh, uh, of course, uh, two and a half is in real uh, dimension. Um, and uh, the top, uh, since uh, there is this uh, small uh, slope of the pavement, then uh, the crest fever will be 145 centimeters. These are some uh, um, pictures for configuration A1. These are uh, taken for water level 110 centimeters. A significant divide of 50 centimeters and uh, uh, one of the two uh, steepnesses and uh, what you can see is that uh, the uh, water um, is the wave is really reflected from the barrier of course it overtops the barrier this extreme wave height but then it uh, uh, jumps down creating really a big impact in the inner part and uh, this impact is a little dangerous we believe for the Mazzegni stone uh, of the pavement of the piazza. So uh, this is the first measure, uh, mitigation measure, configuration A1. And the second mitigation measure was uh, uh, this case, where the barrier is placed a little bit inward, and uh, you can see with the same wave height that uh, the imp impact on the pavement, pays, um, pavement is much smaller, and uh, basically uh, so uh, the overtopping is uh, smaller. As uh, we see from this graph, this is configuration one, barrier placed at the edge, and uh, you can see that the maximum discharge here is uh, approximately uh, double than the discharge that we find in configuration A2, um, which uh, you should also, also benefit from the fact that uh, it is five centimeters higher. Uh, we can also compare the uh, wave overtopping um, achieved with the two uh, configurations with presence of the barrier uh, versus the uh, case without any barrier and uh, you can see that there is a, a huge uh, reduction a factor going from three to six, uh, three for configuration A1 and six for configuration A2. Clearly in this mitigated uh, case uh, it will be possible to get rid of the overtopping through the uh, new uh, specifically designed uh, uh, drainage uh, system. For configuration A2, um, we also consider that it was a little bit uh, difficult to, to design what would be the load over the, uh, this barrier. So we measured the load with the three uh, load cells here. Uh, and uh, this load uh, is presented uh, in this graph. Uh, this is scaled uh, with a sort of uh, um, hydrostatic, uh, proportional to hydrostatic load, so rho g from d, d is the height of the wall, 40 centimeters multiplied by hs, this is a sort of hydrostatic uh, uh, reference, and uh, um, proportional to hydrostatic load, and you can see that this uh, total force is uh, of that order of magnitude. Of course, a little larger due to the impact of, uh, of the uh, wall. So, in conclusion, physical uh, model tests were carried out in the maritime laboratory of Padova University in order to measure the overtop and discharge expected to flood uh, Piazza San Marco when the model will be operational. First, uh, recently published tests were presented, proving that uh, the expected overtop and discharge is excessive in the absence of some mitigation measure. In fact, a temporary barrier to uh, reduce overtopping is foreseen uh, and will be built. Uh, um, very likely. Then, new tests were presented analyzing a 40 cm high barrier in two configurations with the barrier placed at the edge of the key in configuration A1 
or 2.5 meter distance at the duration A2. For both cases, the discharge is reduced to acceptable level. However, we believe configuration A2 is to be preferred. First, uh, because it is more effective. Second, because during the tests, large jets were observed that may have some consequences on the pavement stability in the absence of an additional extra protection. And finally, the measured load applied to the barrier in configuration A2 were presented, providing a useful recommendation for design. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention.